Oh no, 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 no. Oh. Oh, I shit my pants. Wait. We're doing <laughs> We're totally, totally clean. We're totally clean. We're totally clean. Don't throw up because I'll throw up. Put another. Ugh. No, it's, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Get a trash can. Get a <laughs> trash can in here. So there I was laying awake, contemplating life at 3.47 a.m. this morning on the other side of the world. And one of my regulars drops me an email saying, have you seen the new Two Bears One Cave? To call it a spectacle would be an understatement. Bert literally craps his pants and wipes it on the show. First thing out of his mouth is back to the Kelsey brothers. It's insane, man. So naturally, I'm curious and open up YouTube and spend the early hours of the morning listening to Tom and Bert's latest episode of Two Bears One Cave. And it immediately became clear exactly what was going on. The whole thing, unsurprisingly, was completely fake. So let me break it down because I noticed a few things in this episode. And Bert fake crapping his pants all of a sudden became the least interesting thing that I found. Now don't worry, I'm going to show you how it all went down. But for me, the most interesting part was this gem. That's right. We beat you because we're friends with Joe Rogan. <laughs> So the story of our careers. <laughs> we didn't have to try out for a team. We got picked. Our dad owns league. <laughs> we didn't do anything during this. So how did we go from Bert fake crapping his pants to bragging about being a Nepo man child? Well, the theme of the episode was two bears versus two Kelseys in reference to the Kelsey brothers, Jason and Travis, who play in the NFL. And if you haven't heard... Travis is dating Taylor Swift. And I just want to say this up front. Usually these guys have something to talk about on Two Bears, but it was actually at the end of the podcast when Bert said this. Hey, can I come to Thanksgiving? Mm. That I realized this episode was recorded in the week before Thanksgiving. And what do you know? That was the week that they posted their first podcast together in months called The Bears Are Back. So I'm guessing they banked a whole bunch of episodes that week so they had a whole bunch of Two Bears episodes in the bag for the next few weeks. That's something that my regulars will be fully up to speed on because we've been following this pattern for a while now. Anyway, the reason I bring this up is because when you're banking episodes, you're basically shooting two or three in a day, which explains why this one was just over an hour long. But more importantly, you run out of stuff to talk about because there's no gap in between episodes. So here we have Tom and Bert balls deep in their banking week with absolutely nothing to talk about. That's when I realized that this whole episode was completely scripted and completely fake. Now, obviously, they plan their episodes out and have topics to talk about, but this one was like completely dead. So if you look at the timestamps, it's clear that they created this Kelsey Brothers beef because they had absolutely nothing else going on that week. They literally spent three quarters of the episode going on and on and on about this random beef that they supposedly have because Jason and Travis have their own podcast and they kind of look like bears as well, I guess. And as you can imagine, dating Taylor Swift has brought the spotlight onto Travis and of course their podcast. They're coming after us, Tom. Who's coming? The They're Kelsey brothers. They are. They're Kelsey brothers. They're coming after us. I didn't. I didn't know they were coming after us. Though. Yeah, dude. What? what Aaron Rodgers DM'd me. This what, is a lie. What did they? Um, what are they coming after us for? They want our. They want what we got, buddy. Yeah. We got it. We've got to show them. Yeah. Our capabilities as broadcasters. So that was how it started. Like I'm saying, clearly scripted. Tom was obviously tired. They'd probably been recording all day, and it got so bad. That at the five minute mark, like literally five minutes in, Bert starts explaining why Taylor Swift is so famous. Like seriously, Bert just discovered Taylor Swift is more famous than he thinks he is. Taylor Swift. Okay. Push pause on the, us attacking the Kelsey brothers. Okay. Taylor Swift is legit. Yeah, she's got something going. She's, she's definitely got something. She should keep it up. Dude, I mean, I'm being serious. I love to find the thing that no one sees. And then, you know, like pick it apart, mm -hmm. can't find it in her. She seems like a really sweet girl. She really does, actually. Okay, let's, have you listened to her music? Uh, I've heard a couple of the hits, Dude. but I can't say that I've, I know the catalog. Okay, I'll walk you through the catalog. So here we are, five minutes into a Two Bears, One Cave episode, and Bert starts taking us through Taylor Swift's greatest hits. Like, actually, that happened in 2023. But then after a short diversion, he gets back on track 
and drags Tom back into the fake Kelsey Brothers beef. This is what brings me back to the Kelsey Brothers. It's we wild. can't do what you do. How dare you do two Bay Airs better than us? How dare you do a better podcast than us? We got to show them our strength, Tom. Okay. They need to respect us. They do. What do we do? How do we take these guys just back to our eye level? Just so they realize. And so after pushing and pushing this fake beef, Bert interrupts himself by, you guessed it, fake crapping his pants. I mean, this is one of the fakest, most lame bits I've ever seen on Two Bears. It's right up there with them rehearsing their Golden Globe acceptance speeches. We got to hit up Micah Parsons. Uh, did you... I just my pants. Did you I just my pants. Did you I just my pants. Oh no. <laughs> I, just, I just my pants. Really? I just my pants. Oh. I just my pants. <laughs> I am my pants since I lost weight. <laughs> That's old school. Is it wet? I was gonna wear these jeans tonight. And not anymore. Hold on, let me check. Oh no, 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 no. Oh. Oh, I sh my pants. No, I didn't sh my pants. Oh my god, dude. That was I was I thought that was wet. <sighs> let me see a, a piece of t tissue real quick. Oh f Oh, you think you're going to get this on the Kelsey Brothers High Noon podcast? Hey. Oh, God. Wait, where's the trash can? We don't need one. I think we're clean. Ah. Oh. Hold on. I think we're clean. Yeah, we're clean. Oh, we're clean. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> we're I'm gonna, wait. We're doing it. <coughs> we're totally, <coughs> totally clean. We're totally clean. We're totally clean. Don't throw up because I'll throw up. I I'll have to just, put another. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Get it. Trash can. Get a fucking trash can in here. I didn't throw. I didn't. I didn't. Shit my pants. Oh my god! I'm gonna I be sick. I didn't. Shit my pants. No. I didn't. Shit my, pants. I didn't shit my pants. I didn't. Shit my pants. We're good. I'm seeing stars. No. That was so fucking terrifying. That was close. That was close. That was where your asshole goes like this. You go, and then he just held it back by. So back to the Kelsey brothers. Yeah. Don't you love how close we are? Yeah. Okay. That was rough. Yeah, like I said, that was completely staged. They planned it beforehand and they executed it miserably. And do you want to know what was the dead giveaway? Let's take a closer look at that tissue Bert supposedly shoved down his backside to check for any remnants of his brain. There is no way a tissue that is shoved down his boxes into that region is coming out that clean. I mean, absolutely no chance. That tissue was as white as the milk that comes out of Bert's breasts. He didn't put it anywhere near his butt. That was the fakest wipe I've ever seen in my life. And funnily enough, I've had a few of my regulars email me to tell me that he apparently crapped himself on stage at a recent performance and did the exact same thing. He put a tissue down the back and he wiped, but apparently on that occasion, the tissue came out soiled. That's what we would expect, right? So anyway, clearly, if that story is true, it's an ongoing gag that Bert has going on. Now, let me just say this. I could not think of a more perfect bit to capture the sum total of Bert's comedy career up to this day. Bert wiping his brain tissue from his butt and showing it to the crowd is the single best piece of comedy he's ever come up with. Wow. Bless him. All right, okay, so you guys are now up to speed on the whole Kelsey beef and Bert fake crapping his pants. The fake solution to the fake Kelsey beef that Bert came up with was to raise money from their respective fan bases to donate to two different charities, and whichever fan base could raise more money would end up winning this fake beef. And this wacky idea came up when Bert started talking about fan bases and concentric circles. So basically his theory is, if they can find a couple more fan bases that align with their own fan base, they can form concentric circles by creating a common ground and use that extended fan base to beat the Kelsey brothers and the Swifties to raise more money for their own charity rather than theirs. So if you could team up two fan bases, mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm getting back for this charity thing because I think this is important. I think, I think so too. We need, to, we need to get our concentric circles, the Beehive, YMH, we, we, someone goes on Legion of Skanks, we get their fans involved, yeah. all for this charity thing, and we're all going after the Kelsey. Let's polarize the world. Let's make Republicans and Democrats look like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, and let's polarize fan bases Pull right, all for a good cause, all for a good cause. Oh. And by the way, I'm ready for the smoke, okay? Okay. I'm ready for the smoke. It's going to come our way. 
We're going to get hammered. All the month of January is going to be f***ing tough. It's going to be thick. And so there I was, lying in bed in the wee hours of the morning. I'd scrapped my 4am billionaire's morning routine of cold plunging in my sauna while drinking salted tea leaf ice water with a lemon twist. There would be no upside down meditation while swinging gently to the rhythm of the earth's vibrations. There would be no AG1 recovery ritual. Oh no. I'd scrapped all of that so I could listen to the single most beautiful moment of truth Bert has ever uttered in his entire life. It was perhaps the single greatest moment I've ever experienced in the entirety of this channel's short existence. I almost feel complete now, like I can put down the mantle and get back to my normal life. Ladies and gentlemen, my work here is done. We will do the rounds to raise money. Hello, JRE. Oh, we won. What the <laughs> f*** are we talking about? <laughs> the f*** about it? can't believe we were playing f***ing hide and go seek with a blind guy. I know. What are we talking about here? Dude. Been Rogan down. knows nothing about football. Nothing. Not interested either. Zero. And all we got to do is show him Travis Kelsey getting the jab. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, what team do you want to be on? <laughs> the guy who reads the information or the guy who just trusts Big Pharma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We won. There you go. Oh, I don't even think we need to do it anymore. It's over? Oh, it's over. It was fun playing with you guys. <laughs> we beat you. Finally. That's right. We beat you because we're friends with Joe Rogan. <laughs> so the story of our careers. <laughs> we didn't have to try out for a team. We got picked. <laughs> our dad owns League. <laughs> we didn't do anything during this. It's like those F1 drivers are like their dads just buy the race team. It's hilarious. <laughs> Um, what, 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 what you were saying? That, <laughs> no, what? that was a fun game. It was fun. Wow. It's like watching a baby giraffe walking for the first time. Okay. Maybe a baby elephant, but come on guys. That right there was peak Brogan comedy brat. And the funny thing was when I saw that for the first time, I quickly thought to myself, Hey Bert, if Papa Rogan is your cheat code, well, what happened to your machine movie that flopped like a sack of potatoes? You and your buddies plugged it nonstop on JRE. You even played the first teaser trailer on there, all to no avail. Lucky Netflix came to save the day, and it was trending at number one for three weeks. I'm trying to get like you boys. Oh. I don't have a feature film about my life in Russia. Oh, <laughs> number one on Netflix for three weeks. Hey, Pat. Um, I was one of the watchers. Oh, thank you. That was three. So, Pat. And so, look, guys, here's the thing, right? We first started talking about the whole banking episode thing a couple of months ago, and if you recall, I said at the time that, even though it feels kind of weird to be hearing two-week or two-month-old conversations, as long as they have a good guest and steer away from current events, there really isn't anything wrong with it, right? But I feel kind of silly now that I didn't realize that when you bank episodes like this, you don't give yourself time to go out and do stuff in the real world so you actually have material to talk about on each episode. And if you read through the comments of that episode, oh man, more and more of their listeners are getting sick and tired of these boring podcasts that are filled with ad reads and fake scripted gags that are there to just fill in the space between this and the next ad read. Sad to watch this podcast die a slow death, but it's also cringe to watch them lose touch with reality and become almost as lost as the guys from ESPN before Pat. I've tried so many times to watch this show and I can't make it to the seven minute mark when Barf is on. I don't think I've made it to the 10 minute mark of a two bears one cave with Bird on it. The non-stop interrupting is unlistenable. Two minutes in and almost ready to bail. Brent has gotten unlistenable for me at this point. For the right price, Tom would sell his entire family. I feel like this podcast needs more ads. Now that's just a few, but their comment section is full of hundreds of comments saying basically the same thing. Bert seems almost completely oblivious to this, but I think Tom is definitely worried about how much longer they can keep this machine going. This time last year, YMH's views peaked at almost 11 million for the week, but throughout this whole year they've been trending downward, and the same week this year is just under 4 million views. And since August, the whole YMH channel has just been tanking. 
That means that their ad revenue would be almost a third of where it was this time last year. And when you have all those staff and the overheads that come with operating several different studios, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see where they're heading. And I think that's the result of making lazy content and just trying to do too much. Even Bert's personal channel is slowly dying. I mean, these guys used to get millions of views per upload just two or three years ago. It's going to be interesting to see what changes they make in the new year and how Tom deals with losing all this money. It's pretty crazy, right? Anyway, thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this. And if you haven't subscribed, consider jumping on board so you get all my uploads right there in your feed. That's it from me. I'll catch you in the next one. He'll say what he thinks. I curb my opinion based on my career. Like I, there's things that I sincerely regret saying out loud.